Today I'm going to talk about a December birthstone that tends to be a little misunderstood. Here are five things you should know about zircon. Now when someone says zircon, a lot of people want to connect it to cubic zirconia in their minds because of course it sounds so similar. But zircon is actually completely unrelated to cubic zirconia and it's a beautiful natural gemstone. An interesting thing is that it's also actually very similar to diamond. It has a very natural luster, brilliance, and sparkly fire that's very similar to diamond and that makes it a very special gem. Unlike diamond, it can actually be found in a whole spectrum of colors, including yellow, green, orange, red, blue, brown, and colorless. Colorless and blue zircon tend to be the most popular, and they're definitely going to be the ones you see on the market the most. However, they definitely usually need heat treatment in order. Well, in their natural state, zircons are most commonly found in yellowish to brownish and even reddish tones. As I mentioned, colorless zircon looks so much like diamond, and in that way, it's kind of the original moissanite, which is kind of interesting. It was used and confused with diamond for centuries, and also very similar to moissanite. It's, as I mentioned, very sparkly, very high on the refractive index, but it's also doubly refractive. So that's one of the major traits that does set it apart from diamond. Just like moissanite, if a jeweler or a gemologist looks under, under the microscope, they're gonna see a mere reflection of all the facets and facet junctions. And that's what's going to let them know that is indeed not a diamond. Of course, the thing that does set it apart from moissanite, as I mentioned, it is a natural gemstone, whereas all moissanite that you find on the market now is lab made, just like cubic zirconia. An interesting piece of history about zircon is that George Kunz, who was a very famous gemologist for Tiffany and Company and discovered many gems, including kunzite and morganite, which are now both very popular, he also was a huge advocate for zircon. He loved how sparkly it was and the various colors that it came in. And just like he's responsible for actually providing the names of both morganite and kunzite, of course kunzite is named after himself, he also tried to attach a new name to zircon. He wanted to call it starlight. Again inspired by how beautiful spectral colors that it shows. However, unlike those other two, Starlight, of course, never really took off, and just like the gemstone, it really continues to fly under the radar. Zircon, and especially blue zircon, was actually very popular during the Victorian era. So if you're looking at antique pieces from around the late 1800s up till 1900, you may just find small blue zircons or even colorless zircons in those pieces. Of course, the one important thing to know about zircon is that it is low on the hardness scale it's around a seven to seven and a half and it's also very brittle so when you are looking at antique pieces or even estate pieces with zircon unfortunately especially if you're looking at kind of larger carat sizes the gemstones tend to be have a lot of chipping especially on the facet edges and junctions and if you are considering zircon even for an engagement ring because they just have that beautiful sparkle and eye-catching brilliance you do have to be careful especially if you're wearing it in a ring just because they are very delicate gems gems. Zircons really do have so many mysterious characteristics, and one of the most interesting things is that they are considered one of the oldest materials on Earth, period. They've even found zircons in recent years that are up to 4.4 billion years old, one of the oldest formed pieces in the Earth's crust. Of course, as you can imagine, any material that exists on Earth that is going through millions and billions of years is going to see a lot of change. And another interesting thing about zircon is that it has been found to contain some radioactive elements, including uranium. These zircons that do contain these radioactive elements, of course, over a long period of time, the uranium and other elements can start to even break down the crystal structure of the zircon, basically leaving it nearly amorphous, very similar to opals, which have no crystal structure whatsoever. These zircons that have lost their crystal structure are called metamict zircon, or sometimes also called low zircon. And while they're often a greenish color, also very similar to opal, this kind of broken down and amorphous structure can even have them display spectral and kind of rainbow colors, which is very interesting. Of course, it's not super likely to find low zircons, which are mounted in jewelry. However, I just love this piece of science and really history that comes with these amazing gemstones being one of the old materials on earth I think it's a very special gemstone that people should know more about and really consider having in their collection thank you so much for watching and of course if you have more questions about zircon feel free to put them in the comments below and visit us on our main page at winstongemsandjewelry.com